Well, welcome back, pharmacy aficionados. Welcome back again this month to www.salesystem.com.au. My name's Glenn Guilfoyle and I head up the specialist pharmacy group called The Next Level. And we come to you each month in this shape and forth, both video clip and written word with a topic, a subject, a morsel uh, for you to cogitate over in terms of your pursuit of forward pharmacy excellence. And so this month, I want to talk about the applications of production line philosophy to pharmacy. Now, readers of the trade press over recent months will have had the opportunity to digest the nine pathways espoused in CP2025. One of these describes the importance of improving business operations and in particular, observing workflows and reviewing procedures to look for opportunities for improvement. Now, in considering how you might apply this to your pharmacy, it's useful to revisit the basic fundamentals of assembly line theory. A quick wiki peep, as we call it, reminds us that an assembly line, and I'm quoting here, an assembly line is a manufacturing process in which parts are added as the semi-finished assembly moves from workstation to workstation where the parts are added in sequence until the final assembly is produced. By mechanically moving the parts to the assembly work and moving the semi-finished assembly from workstation to workstation, a finished product can be assembled faster and with less labour than by having the workers carry parts to a stationary piece for assembly. Now, according to Henry Ford, and still I go on quoting Wiki, uh, number one, place the tools and the men in the sequence of the operation so that each component part shall travel the least possible distance while in the process of finishing. Number two, Use work slides or some other form of carrier so that when a workman completes his operation, he drops the part always in the same place, which place always must be convenient to place his hand and if possible, have gravity carry the part to the next workman for his own. And number three, using sliding assembly lines by which the parts are to be assembled are delivered at convenient distances. Assembly lines are common methods for complex items such as automobiles and other transportation equipment, household appliance, appliances and electronic goods. Finish quoting Wikibeaks. So my question, what about the dispensary? Our studies at the next level spanning more than 300 real-time observational data collection and analyses of customer engagement and script processing indicate more often than not optimal applications from the assembly line theory are absent. Our pharmacist conversations indicate perceived non-applicability. The dispensaries serve people, not make widgets are health-oriented, not production-oriented, are individual, not en masse. Now, I agree with all of that. Counterintuitively, though, that is exactly why retail pharmacy should adopt and tailor assembly line principles. Think of your key production points as script in, ideally separated from script out, tech processing bench, ideally a no pharmacist zone. Pharmacist checking bench, ideally within a few steps at most from both the tech processing bench and the script out counter. Meds for collection bay, ideally a few steps from the pharmacist checking bench and the script out counter. And script out, ideally separated from script in but proximal to OTC counter. If these production stations can be physically laid out in an assembly line or an inverted U shape, then you afford yourself the best chance of one-way production flow. This in turn affords you the best chance of rostering for skills specialization at each station. 
which in turn affords you the best chance of maximum efficiency at the first four stations mentioned uh, that I mentioned just before and maximum effectiveness, customer engagement, at the last of the stations uh, I just mentioned. So this is why, counterintuitively or otherwise, an assembly line setup is best for serving people as well as making widgets, health orientation as well as production orientation, individual as well as en masse. Too often, pharmacy teams give themselves no chance of consistent one-way production flow with all these associated benefits because Rafferty's rules apply at the serving counters, i.e. customers are served at the location at any one of the back counters that they or the staff choose. So I hope this has given you something to uh, debate with the team in terms of applications of production line or assembly line philosophy to pharmacy. And don't forget, if you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one, -on -one, we're only a phone call away and all the contact details are wrapped around this video thumbnail on the email you've received. Till next month, bye for now.